and welcome to our second video on the Eucharistic revival and what we believe about the Eucharist. Today I want to talk about the early church, the early Christian church, and what they did when they celebrated the Eucharist. Um, so we hear about this last time we talked about scripture. Let me grab my Bible here. Um, so we have canonized texts in scripture um, from that first century, what they did in Jesus' time. We have letters of St. Paul. Um, we have the Acts of the Apostles. But we do have early church writings from right after those guys, from like right after Paul was writing, from right after Luke was writing Acts of the Apostles. We have other people that were writing right at that point. So those texts are not inspired scripture. However, they are the closest people to Jesus and the apostles that we have to look to as true Christians. We certainly we do a lot of things today, but like 2,000 years later, it's like, okay, we can sort of lose a lot of things. You ever play a game of telephone? Do you ever play that when you were growing up? Like one person says one thing and tells it to another and tells it to another. You know, when you get all the way down to the end of the line, it's completely different. Um, right, if we just relied on what we have 2,000 years later, we could easily get that confused. So when we go back to the early church writings, what people say uh, in the early 100s and the 200s, these are people that knew the apostles. They were celebrating mass right after uh, Jesus' resurrection, after the apostles started doing things. So I want to take you through a couple of those texts. Um, book recommendation time. Um, first book recommendation I have is uh, called Early Christian Writings. Early Christian Writings is uh, a great book that has just a bunch of different people from the early church. People like Ignatius of Antioch, um, St. Irenaeus, St. Hippolytus, all kinds of uh, great early church writers. And they're writing about the early Christian faith. So I highly recommend pretty cool stuff to be able to see in there. Uh, another book recommendation is called When the Church Was Young. Um, that book just talks about the early church when the church was very young and they were kind of trying to figure things out. How did they celebrate their liturgies? How, what did they believe in? What were some early heresies? Some things that um, they knew that they shouldn't be believing in because this didn't fit with what Christ said. Um, so a couple book recommendations, early Christian writings. It's a penguin classic. Um, and then the second one is when the church was young, which I think was actually published pretty recently. So both of those would be great writings if you want to check them out. Okay. Why is this stuff important? This stuff is important because we don't just believe these things um, because it's like what we do now. It's what we do at St. Thomas Aquinas. It's what we, you know, whatever. We do this because this is what uh, our earliest Christians did. Like we are in union with the early church. We do what Jesus did. Those people in the early church um, did what Jesus did. And we look to them to be in union with them. What we do on Sunday, we don't just make up. We don't just do it because it's fun. Oh, it'd be cool to do this. It would be cool to do that. No, we do what Jesus did. And we are in unity with all of those in the early church who did what Jesus did, who knew it because they were just really close to there. I want to tell you a quick story about a guy who converted to be Catholic about... Um, about three years ago or so, uh, he was sort of reading about a few different things and sort of diving into his faith. And um, one of the things that he did, he, he sort of found it strange. His, his church actually stopped having communion every weekend and started just doing it once a month. And he thought that was kind of strange because it's kind of a big part of scripture and everything. Um, so he started just kind of doing some research. And one thing that he came upon was some early Christian writings when the church was young. And he started reading um, what was going on and what how they spoke about the Eucharist, how they spoke about the Mass, how they spoke about liturgy. Um, and he said, as he was reading that, like he literally was reading it, like puts down his book and he says to himself, these people are Catholic. Like he, even like 2000 years later, he could see he's reading these people from the 200s, the 300s, uh, the 100s even. And he's sort of saying these people in the early church, they're Catholics. They do what Catholics do. And, and of course the, the reverse is true. We as Catholics do what they did in the early church because it's not my liturgy. It's not my mass. It's not just whatever we, what we want to do here. No, we do what Christ did. We follow what they did in the early church. This means something. Uh, and so that's what we do. So that was a powerful thing for him. And that was one of the first things that led him to say, if this is what they did in the early church, and if these people in the early church are Catholic, and that's what Catholics do now, then there's something big there. I want to tell you something else funny that he said. <laughs> he said that um, he's been to a lot of Christian liturgies. He tried out a lot of different churches when he was trying to figure out what to go to. And he said a couple things that led him to want to become Catholic are bad music 
and bad preaching. <laughs> and uh, at first I was like, oh, you know, what, what are you saying? And he was like, don't worry, Father, I think your homilies are fine. I was like, okay, fine, whatever. Um, but what he meant by that was in, in a lot of other churches, the emphasis is just put on like really good preaching and like it's got to be really engaging and entertaining and exciting or the music has to be like really exciting and really good music and that's why people come. And he said the first time he went to a Catholic Mass, he said it was abundantly clear this Catholic Mass was not about music. It wasn't even about preaching. He said the preaching was pretty short compared to most other churches he'd go to. It was like 20-minute sermons, 30-minute sermons. So count yourself lucky, all right? Um, and he said the first Catholic Mass he went to, he said the homily was just like seven minutes. It was such a small part of this whole liturgy. And he said what the liturgy focused on, what the Mass focused on, was the Eucharist, was what we see in Scripture, which is what Jesus said. And he said so it was bad preaching and short preaching um, and bad music, he said, um, that led him to say what the Catholics do at Mass is in line with what they did in the early church. It's focused on what Jesus said to do. It's not focused just on what we want to do. Hey, let's talk for a long time about Jesus uh, and have super exciting, engaging uh, homilies, although, you know, I try. Um, <laughs> but um, we also, you know, you know, focus specifically on the Eucharist itself. That is the source and summit of our faith. And um, one thing that he said one time is he's like, it actually gets kind of boring how long our prayers are about the Eucharist. He says you can get bored in that time. He said, but that's worth taking time to do because that's the center of our faith. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to share some of those reflections with you, some of those stories um, that one of those converts sort of saw. This is what the early church fathers did. This is such a focus of our faith, and it's there for a reason. And that's because that's the tradition of Christianity. Mm -hmm.